Hello there, Italy and the US Fiscal Cliff are at the top of traders' thoughts as we see out this year. I've been chatting to Craig Earlham from Alpari about the latest developments. Italy's back on the agenda, particularly around the elections. What are the particular risks surrounding Italy which could upset the apple cart? I think the biggest risk, especially in Italy at the moment, is Silvio Berlusconi. Now, we've all seen uh, what, what, what kind of a state he left the economy in only a year ago, and the fact that he's running now for a fourth term is starting to cause a bit of concern over there. We have got, obviously, the resignation of Mario Monti only a few days, only a few days ago, and that's also caused another concern, although it shouldn't really cause too much of an impact. The original elections were expected in April anyway, so the fact they've been brought forward to February isn't too much of a big deal, but the fact that the reason that they've come back is the fact that the PDL party did withdraw their uh, support for the party and the fact that now Silvio Berlusconi is starting to, uh, is, is decided to run for Prime Minister. That is a bit of a concern. He does have his loyal supporters and he is starting to look for that popular vote. He's, he's mentioned the fact that he wants to uh, offer a referendum on EU membership. Now, this can gather support, especially at a time when you've got so much austerity in the country. This can actually gather significant support. At this moment in time, it doesn't look like he's going to be too much of a big of a threat, but over the next couple of months, things could certainly certainly change there. So I think we, it is going to be a few weeks before we start to see what the real impact is going to be. At this moment in time, it doesn't look too bad, but over the next couple of months, things could certainly change. Yeah, so, so specifically, it's not so much the election, it's just that name, Silvio Berlusconi. Exactly. And I mean, like I say, we saw what the state the economy was in last time, and you can't expect things to be any different if he did come back into power. What we do need is we need a government in power who's going to continue with Mario Monti's reforms, carry on with his budget responsibility. I mean, that is what's regained Italy's credibility over the last 12 months. That's why their borrowing costs have come substantially lower than what they were 12 months ago. And that's why that, that is something that we do need to retain in Italy. And that's something that the Democratic Left Party are looking to, are looking to continue with, especially the, the bulk of these reforms and the bulk of these uh, budget cuts. So like I said, I don't think there's going to be too much of a problem in Italy next year. I think the majority of problems is going to come over the next couple of months with Berlusconi gathering more and more support. But I think once we've had the elections, once the, uh, the Democratic Left Party do win these elections, which is widely expected, I think things will start to calm down again, especially if uh, Mario Monti does get a place within the party, which is also being spoken about at the moment. <laughs> Let's move on to the US. I know you write about the fiscal cliff. I'm sure you're quite sick of writing about the fiscal <laughs> cliff over the recent weeks. Do you see any signs of progress there? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, for one, we've had uh, three days of meetings now. The first day on Sunday, we've had two of these have been face to face. And prior to this, it had been, I believe, two months before they'd had a face to face meeting between Barack Obama and J uh, John Boehner, the uh, Republican speaker. So, again, that is in itself is significant progress and we've also I mean, we heard like last week that um, that Tim Gardner the Treasury Secretary actually said that no deal will be done they will go over the fiscal cliff unless the Republicans accept the fact that we are going to have these uh, the expiry of these uh, tax breaks on the top 2% earners the people who are earning over $250,000 the fact that we've seen these face-to-face -face meetings since then suggests that the Republicans are willing to accept uh, these these tax hikes on the top 2% which suggests that we are seeing progress what we do need to see now is we need to now see the Democrats and Barack Obama start to uh, negotiate, start to accept a bit of a, a bit of a fallback on these entitlements. This is something that we are, the Republicans are looking to cut, cut these entitlements, see these tax, re tax reforms come into place and close some of these loopholes. And then we can start to see some real significant progress. Like I say, it is positive what we are seeing so far, but there's going to be a lot of negotiations over the next couple of weeks because we do know that Obama is against uh, so many of these spending cuts, especially when the economy is so fragile. Sure. What about the FX implications? I, earlier I spoke to Jeremy Cook from World First Foreign Exchange. He was saying a positive outcome is priced in, but a negative outcome isn't priced in, and we could see a big dip if they do go over the, the fiscal cliff. Is, is this a view you would share? Yeah, absolutely. I think at this moment in time, I mean, We've seen this all before in the US. We've seen the fact that they do continue these negotiations. They do maintain this hard stance right up until the point when they are forced to negotiate. So I don't think anyone seriously at this point really sees us going over the fiscal cliff, especially not fully over the fiscal cliff. I think they will continue with these negotiations up until the final week. I do also agree that it is, or is priced in. So if we do go over the fiscal cliff, I do think we are going to see a significant dip, especially in your risk-associated currencies as well. Sure, a quick word on the UK. The unemployment rate 
dropped again. So it seems a positive sign that the UK unemployment rate seems relatively buoyant compared to other parts of the Eurozone. Yeah, absolutely. There is a lot of positives to be taken from this. We also saw the jobless figures significantly improve, especially compared to what we were expecting. We've seen the unemployment now at 7.8%. Uh, so, it, yeah, we are, see, we are seeing a lot of positives, but what we have got to factor into this is how much of this is part-time employment. Obviously, we saw earlier in the week, we saw some figures which suggested that uh, permanent employment was picking up through agencies and also uh, also temporary employment as well. But like I say, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how how many of the how what proportion of this improvement is due to part-time employment and also we've, it's we're also entering the Christmas season now so how much of this improvement is down to seasonal employment as well I think we're going to see a more much more accurate reading of UK employment conditions come January February time <laughs> Craig Earlham from Alpari speaking to me there. There's more interviews to come here on Dukas Copy TV, so stay tuned. But for now, goodbye.